guys. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? It's great to see you guys today for another, we usually do Tip Tuesdays, but today we're going to do a partner spotlight. And I'm here with my friend, Nathan Hirsch. Nathan is so well known in the e-commerce community. I first came across Nathan uh, when he was the co-founder of FreeUp. And that was where I hired my first virtual assistant and I learned all about how to hire. And Nate was just such a, a helpful guy along my journey of, of hiring my first. And now I'm proud to say that I have a full team. And, you know, I just went on an amazing entrepreneur's retreat to Peru and I didn't even bring my laptop. And so this guy had something to do with me getting there. So, you know, he helped me get started there. And then, you know, Nathan also co-founded a, uh, a training program for how to hire called Outsource School. And uh, it's just a really great program teaching you how to hire, how to interview, all the things. Um, so that was also a really great resource for me on my journey. And now, I mean... Here we are talking about Ecom Balance, which is Nathan's new company, um, all about e-commerce accounting for entrepreneurs. So we're here. Nate, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's good to good to see you again. It's good to be back in the e-commerce space. I feel like I, I disappeared for for a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I've been a, an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. I've never had a, a quote unquote real job. Uh, my business partner and I we we met in college and we built a, a pretty large Amazon business back in the the wild wild west days, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Uh, drop shipping on Amazon where. Amazon didn't even have PPC. There were no courses, no consultants. And as we scaled this business, we, we struggled to, to hire because we were 2021, which led us to, to hiring VAs and freelancers, which led us to building a marketplace that, that you mentioned, free up. And free up was a lot of fun. That was our, our first adventure, really growing a brand, growing something that, that we had control of that wasn't relying on Amazon. And we scaled that for four years, built a great team, hopefully helped a lot of e-commerce sellers and uh, got acquired right before the, the pandemic, which was kind of crazy. And I think after the, the acquisition, Connor and I both thought we'd be traveling for a year or two and that didn't happen. We, we were locked at home and, and we ended up launching a course called Outsource School, which has helped a lot of people hire. And it's the same process that that we use on all of our businesses. We even use it with Ecom Balance today. And it led to a, a lot of brainstorming for for two years. Connor and I, we met up at coffee shops. He came over my house and, and vice versa. And we tried to think, how do we stay in the e-commerce space, uh, but do something different, do something that has nothing to do with, with VAs and freelancers. And we've always had a, a passion for finances, both personally, we do a lot of investing and, and just financial management, but but also business-wise. I mean, we, we, we like making really good decisions at the end of each month uh, based on real numbers. But it also helped us pass due diligence and, and just having immaculate books and and going through that process. And and it's way different than when we first started, which was uh, just dump everything on our accountant at the end of the year so we could pay taxes and repeat every single year. So we, we thought that there was an avenue, a potential avenue uh, doing bookkeeping for e-commerce sellers. We interviewed about 200 plus e-commerce sellers, spent a good 60 days doing that, just trying to learn every single pain point. Who are the competitors? What do people like? What do people not like? And from there, we, we built a, a bookkeeping team here in Denver. We were lucky enough to, to find this lady, Shelia, who's our new financial uh, controller, who's done a great job helping us build a, a whole team here. And, and then we did a beta round. We had 30 clients. We we put them through our process. We used them to, to break everything possible and tweak it and, and hopefully make it better for future clients. And we appreciate their patience there. And now we have a, a good team, a good process, and we feel like we're, we're down to hit the ground rolling, which is why I'm, I'm here hopefully spreading the word on, on Ecom Balance. So that's a, a long, short version. I love it. You know, I can tell you're, you're a serial entrepreneur. I love how you also found a great partner along the way. Uh, I think something that all of us learn as we get into our businesses over time is that we are only so good on our own. <laughs> you know, we can only build so much on our own that comes to like building a team and, and everything along. It doesn't mean we always have to have a business partner, but you know, we can only do so much on our own. And I love that you found Connor and you guys that just keep building things together. You're dedicated to it and it's so much fun to watch. So, you know, 
accounting isn't very exciting to talk about, <laughs> but I think that it's so important because as a consultant and a, a business owner myself, as a brand owner myself, um, you know, like you mentioned, Nathan, you're very passionate about finances. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be passionate about finances. Even if you're not the one doing the bookkeeping, which you shouldn't be after a while, right? Uh, you might want to start out that way, but you should know your numbers and you should, you should use them for your decision-making capabilities and um, to help you understand how to move the needle in your business. And that's something that um, I start with on just about every coaching call. And it's something that um, I teach people how to kind of like, this is how you calculate your bottom line. And it's hard for Amazon sellers because Amazon has so many different areas of seller central where you're like, where's this charge coming from? What is this? How do I, huh? What is, you know, and then advertising is coming out of one pot and you don't really, it's hard to calculate your bottom line. Um, so what advice do you have? I mean, I know we're going to get into talking about bookkeeping, but what advice do you have for Amazon sellers that are either just getting started or growing and feeling like they just, they don't understand their numbers. Um, and they, they don't really know how to figure all that out with Amazon. Yeah, you made a lot of great points there. I mean, first of all, I, I tend to like businesses that everyone else hates, uh, hiring and, and finances, but it's so important. Every, every company uh, needs to do those. And really no entrepreneur should be doing their own books for, for two reasons. One, it's just not a good use of your time. Any time that you're spending doing bookkeeping is time you're not spending growing your business um, and actually scaling, marketing, launching new products, whatever it is. And second, most entrepreneurs just aren't good at bookkeeping. And any time that you spend doing bookkeeping, you're most likely going to have to pay to, to get it redone anyway. I would say nine out of 10 times an entrepreneur does their books. They, they, they have to pay someone, whether it's me or someone else, to, to redo it anyway if they want it to My be My accountant literally paid for herself in one year because she had to redo both of my 2017 and 2018 taxes because they were completely wrong. <laughs> I thought I could just hire like a normal accountant in town to do my taxes at the end of the year. That didn't work. And so she paid for herself. Like I got so much money back and I got out of what could have been a horrible audit just by hiring an e-commerce based accountant. Yeah. And that's a great point too. I mean, you want someone that knows e-commerce. I, one of the, one of the things we learned through interviewing a, a lot of e-commerce sellers is every time they would go to their uh, run of the mill bookkeeper, their average accountant, their, their person in their town who didn't know e-commerce that again, just created another mess that had to be cleaned up later because e-commerce is just a, a whole nother animal when you're dealing with Amazon and inventory and cost of goods sold and, and all that kind of stuff. And especially if you're looking to maybe sell your business down the line and we live in the age of aggregators and people buying up brands, you need clean books uh, if you're going to be able to, to do it. So um, some other kind of tips there. So don't keep track of your books on an Excel or a Google Sheet. Uh, QuickBooks and Xero are, are the two main players in the space. Over here at Econ Balance, we're not trying to, to reinvent them or build our own QuickBooks. We're, we're compatible with both of them. We personally like QuickBooks. Other people uh, might disagree. But Amazon also doesn't make it easy on you. And, and you know this. And you really need another tool to connect from Amazon to QuickBooks and Xero. And, and we've tried everything from ConnectBooks to there's a company called Cinder. But the one that's most accurate, easiest for bookkeeping, and, and actually get you the best numbers is a company called A2X. So really making sure that, that in your mind it's, hey, I'm not going to do my own bookkeeping. I'm not going to get it done in Excel. I'm not just going to watch the money go into my bank account and, 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 and try to understand my numbers from there. I'm going to have Amazon connect with A2X to QuickBooks or Xero, and I'm going to get an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow within 10 days of each month being over. And I'm going to review that with my business partner, with my leadership teams and, and make decisions based on those numbers. That's kind of the mentality that, that I want uh, e-commerce sellers listening to get into because that's the, the proper setup. Yeah. So I use A2X, um, but I would say where I'm making the mistake is that um, I use A2X to QuickBooks, but I mostly leave it all up to my my bookkeeper. Like I don't review that stuff. Like she's willing to, of course, review it with me. 
but um, I don't review it. So what I do to uh, make sure that I'm on top of it is I take my balance sheet and I take my P&L and I um, calculate my monthly overhead expenses. And then I look at my profits for each product on each channel um, after advertising. And then I make sure that month over month that I'm tracking that and I'm what percentage of my total overhead that that product is, right? So that I'm making sure that every month my business is profitable. And on a unit economics level, I can see like, where can I move the needle? Like, can I reduce the cost in this one? Is advertising too much on this one? Do I need to just let this one go because it's tanking my business? You know, um, those for me, keeping track at a unit economics level this has been really, really good, but also not being afraid to look at my balance sheet and look at my p and and understand what my monthly overhead and my, you know, burn rate is so that I'm making sure that my business is profitable because I think a lot of people don't realize that e-commerce is a scale game. And, you know, we can't just launch one product in many cases and pay for all of our overhead, right? It takes time. It takes you know, patience, <laughs> it takes growth. We grow or we die in e-commerce. So it's really important. Um, yeah, all great points. I mean, to, to start it off what you mentioned, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't need to live in your QuickBooks account or live in your zero accounts. We we have some clients that for whatever reason like to do that and they're, they're welcome to, they have access to, but again, nine out of 10 clients, you want to go based on the reports. You want to review the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow at the end of each month. And what makes e-commerce a little different is you need segmented bookkeeping. If you're selling on different marketplaces, you want to see per marketplace. If you have different brands, I can't tell you how many sellers will sell five products, but only one of them is profitable, but they keep selling all five of them because they don't really know. They're just looking at the bottom line of their overall business. So you need to really know that and be able to break that down. And, and sometimes it takes creating and running custom reports to really dig deeper uh, into your numbers. And the other side of this, and Joe Valley over at Quiet Light uh, says this in his book all the time, you have to be doing accrual based for e-commerce. There's mm -hmm. very few ways around that. Um, I'm fortunate enough to run a business free up that we were able to do cash basis just because we would pay, we would get paid with clients and pay freelancers within a week of each other every single time. But with e-commerce, you might place an order for 50,000, 100,000 units in one month. And if you're doing cash basis, you're going to show a huge loss for that month. And then every other month is going to show more to be more profitable than you really are. And what does that really tell you at the end of the day? So you have to set yourself up for accrual. And it's also going to help you get a better multiple down the line if you go to sell your business. And even talking to aggregators and brokers, they love when the clients are set up as cash basis because they know that they're getting hooked up on a deal and they won't have to pay as much than, than if the company was actually accrual based. Yeah, that was my other mistake, but I've made a lot of mistakes that I've learned from. <laughs> that was my other mistake is that um, I really wasn't tracking my numbers that way. So, you know, you can account that way if you'd like, but you still need to track your numbers in a way that a buyer is going to be ready for them. So that being said, like, I would love to ask you, what are the biggest bookkeeping mistakes you see sellers making across the board? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest ones that, that A2X solves is I can't tell you how many sellers they'll just take the money deposit it into their bank account. And then they'll count that as top line revenue in their books. When really there, there's Amazon fees, advertising costs, all that stuff that's broken down. When Amazon sends you a, a deposit and you get that, that report of the payout, all of that stuff should be in your, your QuickBooks and A2X allows you to do that. And, and that's what the IRS wants as well. Um, another thing we already talked about is accrual basis. That's probably uh, one of the, one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, and then the third is, is figuring out how you do inventory, whether it's cost of good averaging, which is very common, especially if you're smaller, or whether you're using a, an inventory tool and there's a bunch out there to get more accurate inventory numbers. A2X has an inventory uh, system as well. Um, but you need to set that up up front. You need to know, hey, how are we keeping track of inventory? How are we displaying cost of goods sold in our book? So it's the same every single year, every single month. Um, and, and I mean, if you're doing that and you're, you're, putting in the, the top line number correct, and you have a cost of goods system, um, and you're doing a cruel basis, you're ahead of the curve on most e-commerce sellers out there. I love it. That's awesome. So I think that, you know, we, we kind of talked a little bit about, um, 
this question, but should entrepreneurs be doing their own books? Like at what point, if I'm just getting started, like at what, how do we make the decision, you know? And I know you, from your perspective, I'm interested to hear it because um, you make use of virtual assistants sometimes because that can be really, really affordable for having somebody who's trained in bookkeeping be on, you know, in a part-time or even full-time basis helping you out. Um, so it doesn't have to be expensive, but how, how do you look at this? So there are entrepreneurs who used to be CPAs or are CPAs or were a bookkeeper in another life and they don't even do their own books or at least they shouldn't be doing their own books because if you're really focused as an entrepreneur, your goal is growing your business, not doing the, the bookkeeping of your business. And I mean, off of that, there, there's so many just other things that, that you should be doing out there. Uh, and there's other people that can do your books at a much better level that, than you can. You mentioned virtual assistants. Even when we hired someone in the Philippines to, to do our books, these were not what most people think of as virtual assistants. These were CPA of equivalents. They had five, 10 plus years of, of experience. They had worked on e-commerce sellers before. I'm not trying to teach them e-commerce. I'm not trying to teach them bookkeeping. Where a lot of people go wrong is, hey, I'm an e-commerce seller. I don't know bookkeeping that well myself, but I'm going to hire a VA or maybe I'm their first, second or third bookkeeping client. And maybe they haven't even done e-commerce and then they want your directions on how to do it correctly or even worse. You're just crossing your fingers and hoping that they're getting it right. So it's kind of a whole nother thing that if you're not going to hire a U.S. based bookkeeping service, you have to have your hiring process down uh, from the, the outsourcing side to be able to hire a virtual assistant that you can really trust with your books. And I've seen that go both ways. I mean, with FreeUp, we had a, a Filipino bookkeeper, Marius, who was a, a big part of FreeUp. He not only did all of our bookkeeping, but he did billing clients, paying freelancers. He's still with FreeUp today. We couldn't have scaled that business without him. We have another client who we onboarded last week, who their VA has been doing their books for the past year and a half. They spent thousands of dollars on them and the whole thing is wrong. Um, the client mm -hmm. couldn't even tell us what their top line revenue was because none of it was categorized correctly and, and the chart of accounts was a mess. So you just be very careful if you do go that route and make sure you have a good system to make sure they actually know what they're doing. Yeah. And so how do you audit? Like, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of scary. You, if you don't know anything about if I've never been an accountant, I don't know anything about my numbers. And I think that's why I ended up hiring the accountant that I did in the beginning, because this person said that they kind of understood and they had worked with other clients that did e-commerce and um, and it was all good. And then I found out two years later that it was not. So what would you say is the best way to audit somebody that you hire to actually know that they know what they're doing? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It, it kind of falls along the lines of, of knowing enough to be dangerous. Uh, very similar, let's say you're hiring someone for Facebook ads. You don't have to be a Facebook ad guru, but you should do enough research where you can ask five to 10 good Facebook ad questions before you hire them. And bookkeeping uh, is the same way. I mean, a simple thing is asking them about A2X and asking what the top line uh, of the, the income statement should be. I mean, right there, if, they, if they're telling you it's the deposit in your bank account, you know it's wrong. And you can come up with a hit list of five to 10 questions to, to really make sure the person understands what they're going with. The other side of it is referrals, um, getting someone who has worked with other e-commerce sellers before. You Hopefully, if they haven't, if they've worked with 25 e-commerce sellers before, they know something about e-commerce. But you still want to have that hit list of questions that, that you can ask them to make sure they really understand your business. And I would even give them a, an overview of their business, of your business, and having them repeat it back to you to see if they really understand. Because a lot of the bookkeepers, they just don't get the concept of e-commerce more than even just your specific business. You're muted. I mean, I, it's like the second time today I'm typing, so I'm like trying to mute. Um, but what about if we're selling our business? So if we're really thinking about selling, I know for me, I learned this lesson the hard way because I got to the point where I was like, I think I'm ready to sell in the next like two years. I'm going to start reaching out to some of these people that might be able to help me. And when I learned about financials for selling my business, I was like, why haven't I been doing this from the beginning? Like I would have made my business so much more valuable if I knew what a buyer wanted from the beginning. So um, how do you think about that? And how do you set up an econ balance? How do you guys set up people for success so that when they're selling their business, they don't just have, you know, they don't have to translate the books. 
Yeah. I mean, the thing about selling a business is it's not fast. Our due diligence process, for example, it took six months and it was probably the most stressful six months of my life. I mean, every day the something new comes up, the deal could fall through, whatever it is, you never know when it's really going to close. And, and so the last thing you want to do is take that and just extend it and extend it. And one of the easiest ways to extend it is not having clean books because the, these people buying businesses, if you don't have accurate numbers, a lot of them are just going to walk away or they're going to tell you that you have to get clean books before they'll really get into deep conversations. And bookkeeping is one of those things. It's not like a client's going to send me their books and within 48 hours, I'm going to redo the past year and send it back to them. It takes time. I mean, it could take not just us, but from other bookkeeping firms, 30, 60, 90 days, just depending on how long it takes to, to, for us to get everything we need from you. Um, plus how far back you need to go, how many transactions there are, uh, wh whatever it is. So the last thing you want to do is want to sell your company and then realize, Hey, I need to wait another 60 to 90 days before I can get deep into the process. The other side of it is just trust. I mean, the easiest way to build trust or lose trust is to know the numbers of your business. And I always think back to the initial conversation we had on a phone uh, with Mark Hargrove and David Martin, the guys who bought free up. We were, Connor and I were outside of a conference we had just went to and we started digging a little deeper and they were asking us questions on our, our acquisition costs, um, our average percentage of our biggest client and your, in other people's cases, um, e-commerce, uh, like biggest brands percentages. Um, but you need to know your numbers. If someone's asking you overall questions about your business, and you're telling them something and then they dig into the books and it shows something else that trust factor is very is lost very very quickly so it's a combination of being able to actually pass due diligence within a reasonable amount of time being able to get a good multiple, which you want, which we already talked about, but also having that trust factor where the numbers you're saying are actually matching the numbers in your book. And the only way to do that is by having monthly books that you're reviewing so you really know what's going on in your business. Got it. That makes sense. And I guess my, my next question is what types of services can people hire for, right? Like in terms of bookkeeping, because there's a lot, right? You can hire someone to do your bookkeeping day to day. You can hire someone to just do your taxes. What types of bookkeeping services should we be considering? And um, yeah, the yeah. So th there are plenty of add-on services. Um, and then there's also like CPAs or accountants that do the end of the year tax and, and also do the bookkeeping. And we learned a lot about this when we were doing our, do when you're doing our research, just interviewing e-commerce sellers. And what we found is a lot of times the CPA firms that are also doing bookkeeping, they're so focused on the tax and they have so many ups and downs throughout the year of tax season and, and different deadlines that for them to be able to do the monthly books on time every single month, is tough. And also they're doing the books in a way that's easiest for them to get to the taxes. They're not necessarily doing the books in the easiest way to display it for you as a client to actually understand the numbers. And that's not all of them. I mean, there's plenty of CPA firms that have very good bookkeeping services, um, but there is a lot of benefit for having a separate CPA, someone who files your taxes and a separate bookkeeper. And that's the way that we've always set up our businesses. And first of all, you get two different minds working together and, and a good bookkeeper will collaborate with your accountant. But second, you're able to usually save money because the CPA is going to probably charge top dollar for, for bookkeeping, but that you're also getting specialists. The bookkeepers, if they're good at what they're doing, are way better at doing the books where the CPA is way better at doing the taxes. And one of the things that I think that we bring to the table is we're, we're e-commerce sellers first. We're entrepreneurs first. We speak the language of entrepreneur and we we want to display things in a way that, that the e-commerce seller can understand, even if it's just setting up charts of accounts and, and different categories in the income statement and balance sheet so you can really understand what's going on in your business. So our goal is to not only make it clean and easy for your accountant, but also to put it in a way for, for you to understand. And kind of off of that to answer your question, there's a million add-on services, right? Like there's CFO services, there's sales tax, there's payroll. Uh, we do a lot of AR and AP because we work with e-commerce agencies to, to help um, do the billings for their clients. But get the bookkeeping going first. Get it to a spot where 
The month ends within 10 days, like autopilot, you get your income statement balance sheet cash flow, you review it, you make any tweaks that's needed because there's always that, that first 60 days is always a lot of feedback with our clients and making adjustments. And then you can always add on it, whether you need more coaching or whether you don't want to pay your people anymore and you want someone else to do it, uh, whatever it is, but get that good monthly bookkeeping going and everything else becomes easier. If you have clean books, it's very easy to find a CPA that could process your taxes at the end of the year, that becomes a much less uh, big of a deal. Wow. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So we should all aim to have bookkeeping because we can, it's very affordable, right? You're able to find even, you know, VAs, different people that are very experienced with that and can help us on that kind of granular level, keeping our, our bookkeeping straight. And then, you know, when it comes to taxes and stuff, then we can hire the the more expensive professional who's going to make sure that we get all the tax savings as possible. Um, really, really good. And what can people expect to pay? I know it's hard, right? I, I know it's hard to like say that there's, it's, it's like somebody saying, how much does a lawyer cost? You know, but what can, what can people expect to pay for like bookkeeping services? Is there like a range that's pretty reasonable? And, um, and then like, the, the bigger, like top line, those kinds of things. Yeah. And I'll also add, so we don't do taxes at all, but um, I'm happy to refer my personal account and he's been with me for 10 years. He knows e-commerce. He helped us sell free up. So regardless of whether people listening use e-com balance or not, always happy to refer you. Just reach out to me. I'm, I'm pretty easy to, to contact. Um, for, for our bookkeeping, it's really three parts. The, the middle part is the monthly bookkeeping. And that ranges from $250 a month up to, we have clients that, that pay $3,000 a month. So that's customized depending on how many marketplaces you sell on, what those marketplaces are, different types of transactions, how many different bank accounts and processors you use and, and what those are, because some of them are more or less compatible with QuickBooks. So if you go to econbalance.com, you can get a custom pricing quote. Uh, and that's the monthly price where we charge you on the first of the month. You get your books by the 10th and that repeats. And there's other ways to, to save money by referring people, by using ACH, by paying a year up front. But that's kind of our range is that $250 to, to $3,000 a month. Then there's any kind of catch up cleanup work, uh, which is the upfront cost. And that just depends on how far behind or how messy your books are. If your books are, are caught up and you're ready to go, then it doesn't cost you anything. We hit the ground running. We've had clients come to us that haven't paid taxes in two years, and we need to do two years of books before we even get to the, the monthly stuff. So that could be anywhere from zero to, to 10, 15 K. Usually it's 500 to, to a few thousand dollars if you're six months behind or, or whatever in your books. Um, and then the last thing is those add-on services, which is relatively affordable, whether it's payroll, sales tax, AR, AP, paying vendors, uh, extra custom reports you want or, or segmentation. And those could be anywhere from 50 to 200 bucks a month, depending on what that, that service is, unless it's something that's um, daily or something just high volume. So that's kind of our breakdown there. And your pricing is one of those things as a newer bookkeeping service where we're hesitant to perfect it in the first four months. We want to yeah. make tweaks and improve it as we go. So right now it's a, it's a custom price just for every single client. Uh, we are trying to hook up our initial clients with, with great pricing um, just as a kind of a thank you for giving us a chance while we're, we're newer. Amazing. Okay. Well, that gives me an idea of the different things that I should consider. So tell us a little bit more about Econ Balance and how we can get started, how we can, you know, what kind of services you guys offer and what makes you different from other um, e-commerce accounting firms. Yeah, I, I mentioned like we're entrepreneurs first, we're e-commerce sellers first. Our goal is to hire really great people and build really great processes because we're hiring and process experts. And we believe that we have that in place, but we want to make it as easy for you as an entrepreneur to really understand your number. Oh, I think we lost, <laughs> I think we lost Nate here. There we go. Let's see. Am I back? That was there, weird. There you're back. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> um, so we heard, we heard, uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to understand your numbers. Yeah. And at our core, we're a monthly bookkeeping service. We charge you the first of the month. We get your books by the 10th of the 15th. 
Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. If you have catch up or cleanup work, we can help you there. If you need add on services that you want to see their build out or take off your plate, we can do that as well. And you can go to ecombalance.com and get a custom quote. Anyone listening, if you mention this live, uh, you get two months free. So that's kind of a, an extra added thank you for, for giving us a shot, for listening, for hopefully learning something. And, and I mean, you got to get your books in order if you want to be a serious entrepreneur and if you want to grow or, or sell your business down the line. Amazing. Thank you so much for the offer. I put it up there two months free for mentioning Amazing at Home live stream here. Um, well, awesome. I think we have covered it today, right? Like we've covered all the different financial things that we should care about as e-commerce sellers, how to get them, all that stuff. So if you guys are coming in late, hit that rewind button and, uh, <laughs> and reach out to Nate if you have any questions at all. Um, you guys can go to Econ Balance, take advantage of that two months free. Like that's, that's a pretty, that's a really good value. Um, and yeah, Nate, you know, it's just so wonderful having you on the show today. And thank you so much for just being such a pillar in this community and, and helping us with all kinds of things. I'm, you know, I have a lot of gratitude for everything you've taught me, um, and all the help that it's offered in my business and businesses, I should say. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you. And if you're in the e-commerce space, even if you're not looking for a bookkeeper, uh, connect with me, Nathan Hirsch. I love just meeting people in the e-commerce space. Uh, like I told Amy before this, it's good to be back. I feel like I had a little two-year hiatus, but we love just helping the e-commerce community and meeting people in the e-commerce community. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And Amy, I'm sure I'll see you around as well. For sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.